Hello, everybody. Welcome to this month's master class. And today it's all about tomatoes. Yay! Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and thousands of gardeners grow tomatoes. Um, it is one of the most, most, most popular uh, vegetables to grow. And that is totally understandable because let anybody taste a toma homegrown tomato versus a store-bought supermarket tomato and they will start growing them uh, themselves as well the taste difference is so big such a such a different um, experience in sweetness in balance between the sweet and sour of a tomato in the smell in in color everything so Yes, it is totally, totally understandable that you want to grow your own tomatoes. I grow my own tomatoes as well, of course, but they are not the most easy um, vegetables to grow. They're very picky. Um, they can be very complicated. They, there can be, they can go wrong a lot. Um, so I decided I had some questions over the last few weeks about tomatoes so that's why I decided to um, to put on this masterclass so let me quickly check on um, whether we're live yes and let me make sure that I can see the chat or the comments so if you are watching live um, Put your questions in the chat and I can ask, answer them. I already had some questions beforehand, people who can't make it live. So they will watch the replay. And in, of course, I will answer your questions. And if you watch this in the replay and questions come up, still put them in the comments and I'll come back to them. So no matter in which way you're watching, um, you'll get your uh, questions answered. Of course, <clears throat> sorry. Okay, I did make a little presentation. So let me share my screen with you. There we are. Okay, so as said, today is all about tomatoes. And let me see. So I took three simple steps to successfully grow tomatoes for you. So it doesn't mean we cover everything because um then this masterclass will go on for two hours you'll get totally overwhelmed uh with information that is not as common not as often the problem so i mean it's a lot of fluff um that you uh, don't need and as we do easy urban gardening i densed it down to uh, make it um easy and, and understandable and not overwhelming as I do with everything. So I uh, limited myself to the three most important steps that you have to take care of when you are uh, growing tomatoes. And the first step is that I want to talk about the things tomatoes really love. So that means um, I'm going to tell you where to pay attention to when you choose a spot for your tomatoes and when you're uh, taking care of them and growing them. So step one, what do tomatoes want? Tomatoes want sun. And more importantly, they actually also want some sun on their feet because they like the soil to be nice and warm. They are absolutely warmed lovers. They absolutely hate cold in every form so they prefer to be on a spot where the soil can actually nicely like warm up of course if you are as most of us are growing a tomato in a container that is a big thick because it's easy done um, it will actually warm up relatively quickly so make sure your tomato is in the sun i had previously i had a question about sun and how much sun from luan who can't watch this um 
live. So I will I will answer your question um, on that, Luan, because it hardly is that tomatoes have too much sun, although they can get sunburned. So I will come back to that a little bit later, but sunburn is not as common if you grow your tomatoes outdoors. Because of course, indoors they're under the under the glass, and that is what actually really is the um, the danger. So in general, your tomatoes just like it's sunny. I can tell you, mine are on my terrace. I have a rooftop terrace facing straight south, no protection against the sun whatsoever, and they thrive year after year after year. So. It has to be really, really extreme. Will you need to protect your uh, tomatoes outdoors against the sun? But we're gonna talk a little bit later about sunburn. So then you can have a look. I have pictures on what can go wrong section in step three. So it is, um, you have some pictures so you can compare. So I'll come back to it later, later, but in general, they want to be on the most sunny spot that you can offer them. They will really love you if they get a bit protection against the worst rain. And that means that they would be really pleased if you could find a spot, maybe under a roof or under a really little cover. Um, if I can tell you on my uh, terrace, actually you can see it behind me. My terrace, like there, you see it? That is the roof that sticks out about just a little bit short of a meter. So the wall is here. This is the wall of the house where the terrace starts. And you can see the roof sticks out a little bit further. So my, and that is south. So the sun is there. My tomatoes are there. So they are placed against the wall of the house, which of course collects a lot of warmth during the day. So their nights are even warmer than the normal summer night. And they are protected against most of the rain because they're under the roof. And that is what they really, really, really like, especially the big climbing tomatoes. So that's where I have my traditional tomatoes that climb up the big, big plants. The little bush tomatoes I actually have in my normal garden, which is open and out and about, um, but it is um, a bit sturdier in that sense. So if you have the traditional climbing tomatoes, whether it's cherry tomatoes or big normal um, um, tomatoes, or um, what else do I have? Like the curl de buff, uh, or the green zebra, as I have, or the Berne Rose, or whatever type of tomato you have, if it is one that grows big and upwards and really um, needs a stick to kind of like climb up to, they really, really love um, a bit more protection against the worst rain. Of course, when it's windy, I can't protect them completely because I don't have a little tomato house. Some people have, I don't have it. So at the front, they're not protected at all. But my experience is that, they, um, that they're happy enough to produce nice, big, tasty tomatoes or multiple big yield tomatoes with just the cover above their head. And then the third thing tomatoes really, really love is water. They are thirsty little animals. They want to be watered very regular, very constant, but 
don't make the water too cold. As I said, they are absolute, I mean, they hate cold in every way, whether it's air temperature, soil temperature, or water temperature, they totally hate it. So what I do, I have a big 30 liter bucket on my terrace in a little in a corner to collect rainwater. And that water I use to water my plants. And I always first water my tomatoes to make sure that they get watered with the rainwater that is kind of like, of course, it's not really outdoor temperature because it's not getting that warm. But if you put one hand in your bucket with rainwater and you put the other hand under the water from the hose that is straight from your tap, of course, make sure you first empty the hose because the water in there is even for the tomatoes too warm. But then if you have it running for a little while and you compare that water with your hand in your bucket with rainwater, you know what I mean. It is just off cold. It's just not that freezing cold anymore. And they definitely prefer to have that warmer water. Not the boiling hot water that comes from your hose if the sun has been uh, shining on it, but they do like the off cold water that you could collect in a bucket. So not too cold water uh, and make sure you water them regularly, especially once they start forming uh, fruits. In the beginning, you can water them like twice a week with a lot of water or maybe even once a week if the temperatures aren't that high yet in spring to force the root system to grow bigger um, because it's like a workout. If you do a workout and you never challenge yourself to absolutely to or just over your limits, you will never get stronger, fitter, more flexible, whatever you're training for. If you always stay in your comfort zone, nothing changes. You won't grow. You won't grow stronger. You won't grow fitter. You won't grow more flexible. And the same goes with your plants. If they don't have to work for the water, for the nutrients, for um, uh, rooting, then their root system will never grow as big as it could grow. So in the beginning of the year, you can water them a little bit more irregular to force their root system to grow big and strong. But as soon as the first tomatoes appear, make sure you change that, that routine from irregular watering to a very regular, consistent watering every day or every other day. Um, so that they never get a splash of water all of a sudden and that they never ever dry out. So that is really, really important. Okay, let's go to step two. What do they hate? Well, they hate wet leaves. That immediately explains why it is such a good idea to put them under a little roof or under a little roof kind of like protection. Wet leaves um, makes, make your tomato really, really vulnerable. Vulnerable for fungi, vulnerable for viruses, vulnerable for all sorts of pests, illnesses, whatever. So wet leaves is a bad, bad, bad idea and your tomatoes hate it. So when you water, you always water at the bottom always water directly on the soil. Never water the stem or the leaves of your plant. Make sure if you are like me in a really, really hot and you, uh, area and you want to go on holidays, that you have kind of like a drip system for sure for your toma tomatoes. Maybe not leave it to a neighbor who's not used to having a garden or growing vegetables. Have the tomatoes, give the tomatoes their own little drip system, which you put like on a little computer or with an app on your phone that you can make sure that it runs every day when it has to run. 
keep a little eye on your weather app. So if it's been raining for two days, don't water them. But um, make sure you never ever water them on the plant. Another way of making sure that wet leaves can actually draw, because of course they're not protected against everything. We're still growing them outdoors. We're not having them. I mean, if you have them in a greenhouse, of course you have kind of like total control, but we grow them outdoors on our balcony or terrace. So you can't control everything. So they will get wet once in a while when it's rainy and it's a bit windy and you know, that's not a problem then just make sure that once the rain stops that you go in and look whether you can maybe cut away a leaf here and there if they are kind of like sticking together so that there is a good airflow and the wet leaves can dry really really quickly so have a look whether you can maybe kind of like cut your don't cut too much, of course, but cut, you know, whatever leaves that are kind of like sticking together because they're wet, make sure you cut one away um, so that it um, can kind of like uh, dry quicker. And then another thing I mentioned already, I mean, they love warmth and sun, so they hate cold. They absolutely hate cold temperatures. And of course, now, now our plants are big, and it's summer, it's probably not that immediately a problem. But in spring, a lot of people are kind of like, um, they're impatient. So they put their plants out too quickly um, or they leave them out in, in autumn too long and then um, leave them out, 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 out with the tomatoes on the plant too long not harvesting in time and then that cold night with less than 12 degrees at night sets in and all of a sudden your plants are gone so your tomato plants don't really like actually they already kind of like start to um dwindle and start to look not nice as soon as night temperatures go under 15 degrees celsius so that is really really uh quickly and um, that makes, uh, makes it really important to, especially in spring, to think not to put your tomatoes outdoors too quickly because they hate the cold so much, they probably recover once it becomes warmer, but the damage is already done. So some problems that occur in summer are actually done in spring where your tomatoes have been outdoors with that little with that little last cold spell without protection um uh, and and that is where root damage is done damage to the um, kind of like their veins so to say is done so that is really really an issue and in the end at the end of season um just make sure you harvest your tomatoes in time even if they're still a little bit green because you can actually then put them in a bowl add a, a ripe banana put a plastic bag over it and put them in a nice and warm spot indoors and they will ripen they will still ripen as soon as they have kind of like this hint of reddish on the green tomatoes you can actually you can pick them and you can have them ripen further um, without being on the plant. So be sure that you do that in time towards autumn. And then um, the third thing they hate is what we call suckers. And I'm not swearing, I, I, I really not. That's something I just don't do, but that's, that's the name. That's how it's called. And what is it? It is kind of like an, an illegal branch on your tomato, so to say. So let me show you a, a picture to have it visual for you while I'm explaining. So as you can see, this is, of course, this only goes for the, the tomato plants that grow up, like the big ones, the bushy ones, that is not the issue. This is the ones that go up, 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 like 150, 172 meters high. This is the main stem. Your tomato has one main stem. Anything that looks big and looks like a stem, but is going kind of like sideways, you probably forgot to prune a sucker. 
it should have one main stem which you kind of like curl around to stick or weave through your climbing uh, rack. Then it has the immediate legitimate side branch with um, leaves, with leaves on it and later also uh, flowers. And then in that kind of like armpit, so to say, or elbow or whatever you want to call it. I don't know what is called in English, I'm sorry. But you can see it in this kind of like elbow between the main stem and the legitimate branch, you have growing these kind of like illegal branches, which we call suckers. And they're called like that because they can grow, they can literally grow as big as your original tomato plant and they suck out all the energy. And yes, if you leave them long enough, they will produce flowers as well and they will produce tomatoes. But bottom line in the end, you will probably have a less big and a less healthy harvest as was to be expected so take these away while they are still small don't let them grow bigger than about 10 centimeters or something like that take them between your index finger and thumb and just break them away um, they they let go really easily the smaller you can take them out the better because the smaller the wound the wound of your tomato plant is the quicker it heals and the less vulnerable you make them for all sorts of diseases. But religiously check your tomato like every other day or every two, three days for these kind of like little suckers and take them out. That is really important because it really, really... Um, strengthens your tomato your main plant to not have to feed them and it also will give you a better um, yield of course because the root system is still for one plant so the root system still um, transports up only the nutrients that would normally be for one plant and if you have this sucker grow as big as the original plant, then all of a sudden that same one plant root system has to feed two plants. And you can imagine it, it just can't. It just can't, it can't do it. So the whole plant gets just a little bit less uh, from what it needs. So make sure you take suckers away. We don't like suckers. Okay, and then um, step three, I normally, what could go wrong? Well, a lot. I normally don't really often speak about what can go wrong because I honestly think, um, first of all, I don't know too much about it because I've never had problems with my tomato so far. Uh, my mom never had problems with her tomato, so I, I, I didn't experience it actually really myself. So I had to do some research for this masterclass, honestly, because I've never seen it on my own tomatoes. Um, besides an, 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 an occasional burst tomato. Um, and it also kind of like, I don't know, it's so pessimistic to talk about what can go wrong. But it is known that a lot can go wrong with, uh, with tomatoes. So I, I made a little selection of the things that I know are most often experienced when something goes wrong with tomatoes. Um, so bear with me. It's not really out of my own experience uh, on, on little oc occasional things. Um, uh, but or besides little occasional things, but I did do my research for you, of course, and I am going to help you out with some of the things that are most common. So let's see. The first thing that you can 
encounter is what is called blossom drop. And this is something that is often due to large temperature fluctuations. So if you live somewhere, maybe a little high, higher up in the mountains or a little bit further north, temperatures can be really, really nice in like end of May, early June. And it can be feel summery and really no, nice and warm. But then night temperatures plummet. And as I said, your tomato really doesn't like the cold. And especially when it's still kind of like small and, and not like the real big adult plants that they are towards the end of July, um, they're vulnerable, of course, a lot more vulnerable than the big um, adult plants. So that's 90% of the time is um, maybe 90% is large temperature fluctuations. Another really big one, of course, is lack of pollination. So if you don't have a lot of bees on your um, balcony or terrace, or if your plant is so protected that it isn't shaken around sometimes by the, by the wind, you have to help it. it in, in general, I mean, a tomato plant is self-pollinating, so it doesn't really need the bees, but it does need a little shake once in a while to actually get um, the, 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 the pollen kind of like mixed around <laughs> within the flower. So um, if you're not sure, or if you don't see that many bees around where you live, just give it a little shake every time you kind of like pass by. That's enough. Um, of course, too little water can be definitely a problem. As I said, your tomatoes are really thirsty plants. Too much or too little nitrogen can be, but in our case with a good soil mixture that we make, it's hardly ever the case and harmful insects it's normally only kind of like if your plant is infested and then you could see it and you probably are too late and have to take it out anyways so keep your soil well fertilized that even goes for us because just think about it we have our tomato plant in our square and it is there for about june july august september like four months so now, end of June is kind of like a really good time to give your tomatoes its first extra scoop of compost. So you just carefully loosen the top, like the really top layer of the soil a little bit, scoop on a troll or two of compost, go with your fingers like this or a fork. You can use a fork, no problem at all with a fork and kind of like loose, make sure that the compost is nice, loose and crumbly, divide it over the whole square, kind of like, yeah, kind of like rake it in really carefully a little bit. Don't go too deep because then you've damaged the root system, but just, you know, rake it in a little bit and, and then uh, water it so that the uh, nutrients in the compost kind of like slowly seep into the, the soil. Well, as I said, you can stimulate the pop pollination by kind of like tapping the stem of your plant or just give it a little shake. If it's really infested, if it's really insects, um, you can always look, uh, in this case, the insects that are on there, you can look for, for a, a biological, an uh, organic or ecological product containing, um, as it's called, pyretrum. So that is a solution against blossom drop. Then the burst tomato. As I said, this is one of the issues that I experience um, every now and then. Um, it is when your tomatoes during the growing season of the fruits. So not the growing season of the plants, but the growing season of the fruits, when they get flooded all of a sudden after a hot and dry period. 
So it is kind of like if they're thirsty, they kind of like take all the water that they get all of a sudden and then they just burst out of their jacket. So that's simply said what happens. And if it's hot and humid weather, um, it is more likely to, to happen. But as I said, the solution is to prevent bursts of water and so try to water evenly. Um, and you just keep an, an eye on the weather forecast because if it's raining or if it's just rained, you better leave your hose or your uh, watering can or whatever you use. Um, you better leave it and um, not water your tomatoes. And by the way, even though it looks ugly, it doesn't do anything bad to the taste of your tomatoes. You can still eat them. <laughs> so you just pick them. Um, if they're not really fully ripe yet, as I said, leave them on the on the windowsill for, for a day or two or, or put them, if they're really still really green, kind of like put them in the bag, in a bowl, in a bag with a ripe uh, um, banana and have them ripen afterwards and you can eat them. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the taste um it might be a tiny little bit more watery but as your tomatoes have so much more taste than um the ones you 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 used to buy um i think we can handle it it's still okay okay as i said sunburn sunburn looks something like this it's kind of like a yellow spot that appears on the skin of the tomatoes during ripening. Um, this normally happens when your tomatoes are in a little greenhouse or in a little tomato house, and it's not you haven't used like the normal the special glass that breaks the sun rays, or you have used kind of like normal clear plastic and it just comes through too easily and it heats up extremely inside and that combination then will give you um, sunburn. In general, having your tomatoes outdoors, it is seldom, it is seldom the case of sunburn, but especially now Luan, if this is what you would see, the easiest way is to not cut away too much leaves you know give them a natural shade with the leaves of the plants or the leaves of an adjacent plant so maybe you have some high beans in the in the neighborhood in the, nearby or in the worst case you can even use an umbrella during the hottest hours uh, of the day which is in summer in the northern hemisphere normally around like sun is hottest temperatures for us feel hottest further towards the end of the day but sun is normally hottest around one ish between one and three between 12 and three afternoon something like that early afternoon but as said i've never had it um and my terrace is unprotected um in the sun boiling hot so but it can happen. It always can happen. Um, so as soon as you see it, make sure you will you protect your fruits. Okay, then something that looks really distressing but isn't as bad as it might sound. The curled leaves. And then I mean the leaves that curl inwards. As you can see on the picture, you can see it very well here. This leaf would normally, of course, be like that. And now it's kind of like curled in oops, inwards. Um, that is what is cur used curled leaves. And it's, um, it's, it's a sign of stress. It's a sign of stress, which can be an excess of water. That's stress for your tomato plant. Um, it can be that it has to work too hard to dry its leaves after a downpour. Um, it can be that you pruned too much, that your plant actually has to work too hard 
growing those leaves that it needs or with the few leaves it has, it has to work too hard to take all the energy that it needs from the sunlight through photosynthesis. So make sure excess water can drain away. Good. Uh, avoid pruning too much. Um, as I said, it looks not pretty. It looks really, it looks distressing, <laughs> but it hardly has um, um, any negative influence on the development of your plant. So it's not as bad as it looks like, but you have to investigate and you have to figure out what it can be that gives your plant so much stress. Uh, and here, maybe too much sunlight can also be a little reason. Um, just try it out. Maybe place that umbrella or put, uh, put them in a little bit uh, less sunny spot and figure out, see how your plant reacts. Okay, now I have to warn you, I have a few common problems that are a little bit more serious. The first one is early mildew. So there, it looks like this picture. It is brown spots on the leaves and it starts with the oldest leaves. So normally it starts at the bottom of your plant. Each spot develops rings. It's almost like little targets. And eventually your leaf turns yellow and then it turns brown and then it falls off and it kills your plant. Because without the leaves, as I said, it can't take the energy from the sun and the culprit is a fungus and why do you get a fungus as fungus always do because it's humid it's too wet it's warm it's kind of like a sticky environment within your tomato plant so here again it's really really important that you give it make sure that there is enough airflow and that it is not getting too wet all the time it also is, if you have it, pay attention. You can, you can maybe um, save your plant this year because if you take away the, the worst affected leaves, make sure it gets the airflow, make sure that it dries up really nicely. This fungus actually leaves in your soil even during winter. So make sure you are religiously doing the crop rotation as I teach you with Easy Urban Gardening um, to prevent your plants next year getting affected immediately again. So alternate the location of your tomatoes or plant at least two other veggies from, other diff from different families in between your tomato season. So in September, when you take out the tomatoes, immediately plant something, maybe before over winter, make sure you have something in there. Early spring, make sure you have your, your lettuce or your radishes, or maybe your first round of early carrots before you put your tomato in again, end of May. Then it's a septoria leaf spot. This is something you won't see until it actually starts developing tomato. And again, the lower leaves develop the spots first, and it is a leaf mold. It's exactly the same. Never ever water on your plants or the leaves. And if you are affected in the first spots you see, take away the bottom leaves, the old leaves that will get affected first because they're more vulnerable than the young ones and keep them out of the rain. Make sure you have really nice dry plants, not the soil, although, because this is actually in the growing season of your tomato. So you can't have the soil dry out anymore, but make sure the plant itself and the leaves, the stem, the flowers, everything, the tomatoes that they are as dry as possible. And then the worst of all, this is kind of like really the most devastating disease in tomatoes and potatoes. It's Phytophthora, and it is um, divided. It's actually, it comes from the Greek words phyto, phyton, which is plant, and phthora, which is destroyer. So it literally is called plant destroyer, and it's a fungus, and it is horrible. Um, the biggest chance is in warm, humid weather, 
of course, again, it's a fungus. So if your plant, your tomato plant look like this, they're really dense and full with all the leaves packed together and the soil never dries out. So the humidity comes from the air because it's warm and humid weather and it comes from the soil because the water is evaporating. That kind of makes it almost kind of like a little greenhouse in kind of like inside your plant. And that's where this devastating disease this devastating fungus shows up this is a picture where you see the very first spots this is the moment that you might be able to actually still um save your plant but prevention is better here you already see it's kind of like fur it's very much further along it's i mean the pictures i'm going to show you make make it worse and worse and worse <laughs> not to uh, demotivate you but to show you that this is something this is really really horrible and uh, apparently um i was told to prepare myself to experience it at least once in my lifetime thank god tapping wood I haven't so far in the 10 plus years I am now uh, gardening uh, based on my easy urban gardening system, but um, it's still, it, it can happen, but it take, I mean, take the best possible care of your plants. We have what we have been talking about, avoid humidity, avoid um, wet leaves, avoid wet plants, uh, make sure it's airy without pruning too much um give them some extra nutrition every five weeks so give them that uh, extra scoop of compost now starting now it's the end of uh, end of june every four to five weeks easy is four weeks like end of june end of july end of august and end of september you take them out that's kind of like the that's a good way and give them support if they need it so if you have you grow those big um to, look, tall tomato plants give them that stick don't have them hang around or hang on each other make sure you keep them nice and tidy as we uh, do in our gardens um as you by the way can see on the based on the grid this is actually a picture um from the makkelijke moestown it's a colleague um square foot gardener uh, of mine um so remove the suckers from the tall tomatoes every time and make sure that the rain rainwater can dry up easily so um even even if it's a healthy leaf cut it off now and again to give the plant some air make sure it's not too dense um here it is um you can see it as well you know you see it it's i am lying it's not worse and worse it's getting worse but this is an other picture where you might still be able to to cut off the affected uh, leaves. And so inspect your plants regularly, especially in humid and warm weather to end towards the end of summer because they're big then. So they are, you know, the, the, the risk of it them, them becoming really dense plants is bigger. Um, cut off the affected leaves, even if it's just a part, cut it off. Um, do the same with tomatoes that get a strange color. Um, and then you have a good chance that you plant will recover regularly cut away all ugly leaves these leaves are much more susceptible to molds than healthy leaves um, but be honest with yourself um, if you cut away the affected leaves and you keep a close eye on your plants as soon as you see a spot on a leaf again cut it away be religiously consistent in this if you if you were afraid that this this is the problem with your uh, tomato plant and as soon as you see new many new affections coming over and over again or if it's already so far that you actually see it on the stems immediately and resolutely remove 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 your plants if you don't the fungus will uh, spread into your soil and you won't be able to plant tomatoes or potatoes for the next three to four years in that area. And if it's um, an erased bed, 
it comes for the complete, the total raised bed. If it's a container, it goes for that container. If it's in direct soil in your allotment or in your yard, it's about it's a big part of it. It's probably the whole bed. You can't grow any potatoes or tomatoes for three to four years. So prevention is better than cure, curing it here in this case. So make sure you uh, do the crop rotation, you take good care of your plants, you give them the necessary extra nutrition, extra scoop of compost, you make sure that they not, not, don't get too wet all the time, you make sure that they can dry up easily, have airflow going, um, cut away the really, you know, the too much of leaves, etc. So this was kind of like ending on a little bit of a pessimistic note, which I normally never do. Um, but it is uh, what it is. But on the other hand, as I said, I've never experienced in my 10 years, I can't remember my mom having it experienced in her 20 plus, 30 plus years of, of gardening. Um, so don't be discouraged. If you generally take care, good care of your plants, you have to, re and, and remember that they need extra attention, especially in warm and humid weather and act in time if something goes wrong. There's absolutely no reason not to grow tomatoes. Crop rotation, if as I said, is also important. It's a very, very powerful prevention of all of the, all of the misery. So never plant tomatoes in the same place year after year and grow plenty of vegetables from other families in between on your favorite tomato spot. But even if you have a favorite tomato spot and you grow things in between, don't, my advice would be don't grow more than three years on the same spot without growing there a full year without tomatoes. So grow tomatoes on your favorite spot three years with the crop rotation of different vegetables, different vegetable families in between for three years. And then do, do not use that spot for tomatoes or potatoes for a whole year. As I said, I've never had anything happen to my plants, but if it does, it is what it is. Be brave, take action and try again next year. So don't make it stop, transform your, <laughs> stop you to transform your balcony of Paris in town into that healthy, sustainable and beautiful urban paradise that I know it can be and it probably already is. So if you still have any questions about tomatoes, just don't shy away to put it in the comments. Um, Ask them in the Facebook group. That's what we're here for. Um, that's what I'm here for, but also your fellow gardeners who maybe have other different experiences can help you out with tips and, and advice. So any questions, put them in the group. Uh, on tomatoes, it's easiest if you put them below this video in the comments so that we really know, oh, that are tomato. Those are the tomato questions. Any other, feel free to just put them in the group you don't have to wait for me, put a Q&A or whatever post, just put them in the group. We're here to support and advise each other and to um, cheer you on um, if it's successful. So yeah, definitely also share your harvest uh, pictures and videos with us because it's just beautiful to see. That's all I have to say today about tomatoes. Um, I wish you all the best, toy, toy, toy with your tomatoes and all your other veggies. And I will be back um, with um, something soon, um, some live, some masterclass, uh, whatever. I'll be back in the group uh, very soon. Uh, probably maybe end of this week, take you on a little round through my garden just to see how incredibly big my beans are growing this year. <laughs> For now, enjoy the nice weather, enjoy your garden. And I see you soon. Bye-bye.